Hello, my name is Robert Dean Steele, and I am praying through the Psalms. And we're looking at Psalm 35, which is a Psalm of Dave. Now, look, the first, for, first seven verses, listen to what David says. Contend, O Lord, with those who contend with me. Fight against those who fight against me. Take up the shield and the buckler. Arise and come to my aid. Brandish the spear and the javelin against those who pursue me. Say to my soul, I am your salvation. So basically he's saying, Lord, we're going to war. He says, may those who seek my life be disgraced and be put to shame. May those who plot my ruin be turned back in dismay. May they be like chaff before the wind with the angel of the Lord driving them away. So he says, let them be like chaff in the wind and may the wind of the Lord through the angel of the Lord drive them away. May their path be dark and slippery and um, also as well without cause. Then he goes on to say the angel of the Lord is pursuing them. So not only is the angel of the Lord um, not driving them away like chaff, but he's actually pursuing them. Since they hid their net for me without cause, and without cause dug a pit for me, may ruin overtake them by surprise, and may they be entangled then, uh, and, and may they fall into the pit that they made themselves, their ruin. So this is David. He's feeling trapped, and he knows that he needs divine assistance. And he also points out the fact that when you plan fail, you plan to uh, destroy others, Often it comes back on you. Then my soul will rejoice in the Lord and delight in his salvation. My mind, my will, and my emotions are going to rejoice in the Lord. And I am going to delight in the wonderful salvation that he has given me. My whole being will, will exclaim, who is like you, O Lord? You rescued the poor from those who are so strong for them. So in this, David reminds us that the Lord is the one who rescues the vulnerable, the poor and needy from those who rob them. That often happens. We had similar things happen to in homeless shelters in a community that I live. And uh, that's often what happens to the vulnerable. There are those who will take advantage of them. Ruthless witnesses come forward. They question me on things I know nothing about. They repay me evil for good and leave my soul forlorn. Yet when they are ill, I put on sackcloth and humble myself with fasting. So David is saying these individuals who come against me, I don't do that. He says, when my prayers return to me unanswered. So he says, I am praying on their behalf, but I'm wondering why they're not being answered. Probably because of the fact that the Lord has judged them. I went about mourning so as though my friend and brother. I bowed my head in grief as those weeping for my mother. But when I stumbled, they gathered in glee. Attackers gathered against me. When I was unaware, they slandered me without ceasing. So what was happening was he was praying for them, but when he fell, they slandered him, they gathered against him, and they tried to destroy him. No, Lord, how long will you look on? Rescue my life from their ravagings and my precious life from these so-called lions. He says, Lord, I need your help. They're trying to destroy me. They're like lions pacing around, seeking who they may desire. Now, of course, Peter used this same analogy when he talked about the enemy. Then he goes on to say, I will give thanks in the great assembly. Among throngs of people, I will praise you. He says, what I'm going to do is do publicly thank you for who you are and what you've done. Let those who gloat over me, who are my enemies without cause, let those who hate me without reason maliciously wink their eye. They do not speak peacefully, but devise false accusations against those who live quietly in the land. Of course, when you have a propensity towards evil, when you see peace and health, security and success, the first thing you want to do is you covet it, you envy it, and you want to get it at any expense. And so those who have it, you attack maliciously and also with slander. They give it me and say, aha, aha. With their own eyes, we see it. They, of course, are looking for every excuse. That's what Jesus was dealing with 
daily. Lord, you have seen this, not be silent. Do not be far from me, O Lord. Awake and rise to my defense. Contend for me, Lord, my God and my Lord. Vindicate me in your righteousness, O Lord, my God. Do not let them gloat over me. So he says, Lord, I need you to rise up. You are going to be my vengeance. You are the one who's going to vindicate my character, my essence and my nature, which is after you. He said, don't let them gloat. He says, do not let them go. Aha, that's what we wanted. Or say, we have swallowed them up. That means basically, you know what? We got away with it. He says, may all who gloat over my distress be put to shame and confusion. May all who exalt themselves over me be clothed with shame and the grace. So he says, basically, the attributes of those who walk errantly or arrogantly are shame, confusion, shame, and disgrace. But may all who delight in my vindication shout for joy and gladness. He is giving a wonderful parallel for those who are destructive and those who are constructive. Then he goes on to say also as well, may they say the Lord is exalted. He who delights in the well-being of your servant. David is, of course, speaking to the righteous and how that we need to stand and applaud and also encourage those who are discouraged and those who are trying. Then he says, my tongue will speak of your righteousness and also your praises all day long. He says, Lord, I'm going to give you all the praise and all the glory. And I'm going to thank you for your wonderful kindness and goodness to me. And I'm going to do it all day long. What a wonderful contrast. But also a contrast that makes us think about the righteous and the unrighteous. And also on those who put their trust in the Lord and those who don't. Psalm 35. My name is Robert Dean Steele. We've been praying through the Psalms. Thanks for spending time with me today.